and I win right. So this beats leader really well. Iron Man also beats leader, but I think I think it's just better to play destroyer. Like a book. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another uh, Marvel Snap video. Today, I think I have something pretty exciting. It is a Daredevil Destroyer deck. Uh, not really like an original idea. I feel like this archetype is pretty well known. You know, like I did like start it from the deck editor, but I feel like at a certain point, like this is just such a known kind of idea where it's hard to be that original about it. So I just tried to make this like, you know, my, my little twist on it. But you know, the, the combo of like Destroyer with Armor, Cosmo, Colossus, stuff like that is, is very like experimented with at this point. Like people know what it is. I could like copy and paste like half the deck list uh, from just seeing my opponents play it before I got Destroyer. But I mean, so we got Destroyer on a rewards path here at 626. And so I thought I'd make a deck off of it. So key cards here. Uh, I think it is actually fairly budget. Like I don't think you need crazy cards. Like I think it's just the pull three cards of Destroyer and Daredevil really can make this deck shine. I'm not even convinced you need Daredevil, but I really do like it. Um, the fact that you can win turn six with Destroyer very frequently, and then turn five, you have a really strong turn with uh, Daredevil is very useful. So the cards that facilitate that um, are Bucky Barnes, Armor, Colossus, Cosmo. All those cards have like some kind of Destroyer synergy in the sense that they either negate the downside of Destroyer or just straight up remove the effect. So like Bucky Barnes getting destroyed to Winter Soldier, good. Armor protecting all your cards on the tile, good. Colossus surviving Destroyer's attack, good. Cosmo uh, removing Destroyer's ability, uh, like, you know, not having it beam the world. And then also preventing it from getting Shang-Chi if you play it on the same tile, very good. I think Wave is super replaceable, but I do like it. It is very strong, uh, the turns that you have it. Uh, there's a few games here where the wave was huge, like it was good against Mr. Negative, uh, just generally good as far as like playing a turn 4 destroyer and then turn 5 and 6, you get to rebuild the board instead of like the last turn of the game you destroyer and you destroy a lot of stuff but anything protected by armor is fine, it's kind of like the opposite where you destroy her early and rebuild after instead of like setting up to have things survive after the destroyer. Um, but so I do think that card is replaceable but it is, uh, it's nice, you know, it's very nice. Uh, Deathlock is really good here because, you know, you already have your armor, you already have your Cosmo and Colossus, where it's just a three mana, five power creature that can blow up Bucky Barnes, but also, like, the downside is basically irrelevant in this match. Uh, you can play it by itself, you can play it into the armor, Cosmo, Colossus, as I talked about, and it just fills up the space well. It's a lot of power, uh, for a cheap cost, so it's very good. Uh, Warpath, since you kind of don't want to go for too many slots, and Destroyer can kind of correct a slot getting filled by, like, uh, squirrels or rocks or something like that. Warpath ends up being really good because you really, really want to fight for two tiles anyways. You basically want your destroyer tile, like where you put the 15 power, and then the other tile where you um, like set up to keep stuff from destroyer, either through armor or through Colossus or through Professor X or something like that. Uh, Hobgoblin is really good because it's a five minute card, so when we have our Daredevil turn, it's very useful. It also plays around Warpath, plays around Destroyer by filling up one of their slots, giving them minus power, and then also like not consuming a spot on our side of the board, so we can spend our five mana on a powerful effect that doesn't get blown up by Destroyer. I, uh, Iron Man is kind of maybe a controversial card. I don't see Iron Man in a lot of these lists, but it makes a lot of sense to me, because Iron Man is an ongoing effect, so playing him into Cosmo is very safe. Uh, if you Iron Man underneath an armor, you kind of are really restricted in what you can play into armor, where it's pretty awkward where you can play like armor to protect your other stuff, Iron Man, and then like Warpath, Deathlock, and then it's really hard for your opponents to beat that. That's just a lot of power. And that's obviously ideal, but there's other options. Just like armor, Warpath, Iron Man is also really strong. Uh, so it kind of gives you another option where it's like, you know, I don't really have a good spot. I want a Hobgoblin. I don't really have a good spot where I can Professor X. Uh, but Iron Man can really let you swing stuff. And Iron Man is also really good with certain locations. Uh, like the card that gives plus five to every card here, the card that grows cards by one power at the end of every turn, the card that makes a nine cost monster. It's just good in a lot of locations. Um, I don't think it's like a must have in the deck, but I do think if you're going for a more budget option of the deck, which I am kind of going for what I'm trying to show, I think it's a really good choice. Uh, Professor X also very, very strong. The fact that Professor X in Daredevil just wins a lane is insane. 
And the fact that Professor X also protects everything under Daredevil is really good. Where you, like, that's one lane you win with Professor X, and then the other lane you win with Daredevil, wrap it up. You know, it's 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 that simple as a time. It's a one-two. It's, you know, Daredevil on two, Professor on five, Destroyer on six, you won. You know, it's, it's really good. Very, very strong. Um, and again, not really an original idea, but, you know, kind of a more budget-friendly option. If I was to switch out Wave, which I think is the only card you can switch out here, because I don't think you can switch out Destroyer, and I don't think you can switch out Daredevil easily, uh, what card would I choose? So other pull three cards you could have to switch Wave out with, I think Zero has a little bit of game where you can remove the negative effect of Destroyer, and then you have, you know, a one power three cost, which is pretty good, and then you play Destroyer, and it's, it's you know, it's good. Uh, you can do it into Deathlock also, which is nice. But then you kind of run the issue where if you play zero into any of your other cards, you're not really that happy about it. Playing it into like Colossus isn't a huge deal. Playing it into, you know, other cards might not be a huge deal. So zero is an option if you have it, but you have to be really careful about zero. I think that um, Carnage could be okay if you wanted to go for more of a destroy package. If you were really going budget, like if you were just playing destroyer as your only three drop, and then you went like Nova, Bucky Barnes, Carnage, Deathlock, that has some potential. And then you could even play like Angel or Wolverine or Sabretooth. That's another option you have. You have Invisible Woman. I think Invisible Woman works well. Another pull three card, so it's not like perfect. But Invisible Woman uh, does kind of do a similar thing. So cards you play here are not revealed until the game ends. Uh, you can play this with Destroyer and it can really sneak out some games in like a cheeky way where you uh, get to set up a really strong spot and they don't know what you're doing. And then also, you know, like the Destroyer downside is, is mitigated. Wolverine is an option, as I was kind of talking about before, but if you're playing Wolverine with Warpath, it, it can get pretty awkward. Um, I think Ironheart actually, surprisingly, isn't that bad. Some games I'm actually really happy to have Ironheart, where, like, if you're going for, like, that Iron Man package, if you're going for that Professor X package of, like, locking down a game, Ironheart can actually kind of, like, sneak out games in a weird way that you might not expect. Because Iron Ironheart is six power for three mana, uh, and she's the body doesn't matter, so you can just have her blow up to Warpath, and it doesn't, or to destroy her, and it doesn't matter at all. And then you're kind of buffing like a tile you're trying to win, which is interesting. And finally, if you want to go for more of a top end option and you kind of are missing some of the pool three cards, I think Gamora is a good choice. Five mana for 12 stats. If you're guaranteed to hit it off of Daredevil is very good. Uh, so if you don't have wave, but you have destroyer and Daredevil, this is what I would choose. A lot of people seem to have Daredevil. I think it was like a season fast card or something. But so that's the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will be streaming either today or tomorrow. And there's probably going to be a YouTube video today or tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I hope to see you guys around and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so we definitely want to armor left. Because if we don't armor left, we're just going to lose that lane. Uh, really good game to draw an Iron Man, though. Of note, really good game to draw an Iron Man. Do I need to armor this turn? Yeah, I can just armor here, and then Deathlock here, and then I have a good spot to Iron Man, actually, which is pretty good. Uh, conversely, though, if I do that, I don't get to... I don't get to Daredevil in a good interval. It's one location on the right. Yeah, so I mean, that makes Iron Man really strong there. I'm actually gonna snap and go Deathlock here. Because I can Iron Man that tile and I'm like always winning it at that point, right? Okay. Warpath. So I guess I'll play to Bifrost. I, I kind of just want to Daredevil and try to Professor X something. I guess I'll Daredevil Bucky in case I draw a Destroyer, and then I can either go Professor X or Iron Man the last turn. I just have no idea what they're up to right now. It's very scary. Are they just, like, Galactusing? Like, I don't know... I don't know. So if they're if they're Galactus, it's not a big deal, right? Doctor Doom. So I reveal first. So since I reveal first, I can Doctor Doom here, or I can Professor X here, and their Doom Bot doesn't get added there. So I'm winning right, and then I'll win left with one of these other cards. So at 17, so playing Iron Man makes it 34 in the middle. 
and I don't even need to destroy her. Conversely, I can just destroy her right, which actually doesn't sound that bad. Is that maybe better? Then I'm playing to two lanes where they have to add power here and I can destroy her this and they have to add 10 to the left. I mean, at this point, they can't Galactus me or anything. And they're not a Galactus deck, though. Or I can just play... You know, if they have leader, if they leader me, they eat it, right? Because I'm winning middle then. They blow up their Doctor Doom. And I win right. So this beats leader really well. Iron Man also beats leader. But I think, I think it's just better to play Destroyer. Like a book. Love beating leader. I love beating leader so much. Unspot there. Um, so I think since they played Sunspot here, they're not likely to play to that lane where Cosmoing left might be beneficial. I don't wish I had these cards. I could play Warpath to Necratia, or I can just Warpath the left, and then I'm pretty strong on the left. That sounds pretty decent, honestly. Uh, the game doesn't know what to do. Should I like disconnect and reconnect? Okay, so I did that. I have this turn. I think I hobgoblin right. That feels really good. Um, they snapped. They snapped. I think I'm fine with snapping. I mean, they're minus eleven here, so it's this is just like not possible for them. The infinite. So, weirdly enough, I actually beat Infinite there. Where it's like kind of fine. Uh, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna play Destroyer, I want to say Destroyer to the last turn of the game. So what that means is I want to go like this and dominate here. I guess I'm already winning that, I can just go here. I can just do this. I actually don't need to represent anything this way. And then I can even Iron Man that, so it's it's not really that big of a deal, actually. Like I'm they're, they're minus eleven here already, it's it's really not a huge deal. And so I don't draw that, but that's fine. So I mean I can just do this and this. And I think it's fine. I could just say there's no way they win. I, I could just... 28? I mean, it's harder for them to be 28 here, right? But I feel like they're not playing the Infinite. They need to add 8 to the left where their Infinite is, and then this is 17, so they need to add 11 here. I, I feel like I'm snapping back on this. Maybe I get taken for all my cubes, but like, I I mean, this is just so hard for them to win, right? Oh, you know, this might be bad in case they have Shang-Chi. No, they can't, they can't Shang-Chi left. I have a, I have a Cosmo. I don't actually know what they can do left. Like, they really need to split their resources here. That's an 8 cube, baby. That's an 8 cube! 
Did they discard anything? Oh, they have a shovel, sure. No, they didn't discard anything though. Okay. Victory. And again, so like by playing like this, they need to like play to both lanes here. My question is though, how did they get this many cards? How are they able to play this many four drops? That was four four drops. And if they cost two less, they shouldn't have been able to? Am I missing something? How did they play four four drops there? Or was this from... If this reveals first, it would have brought back second, right? Dracula was just another card. How did they... How did they play four four drops? Iron Man seeming like a good addition so far. Iron Man was not in my initial like playtesting of this, but Iron Man has been putting in some like really good work so far. Um, I think we're playing for left and middle, where our destroyer is going to be the biggest card here. I think that's the most optimal so far. So in turn five, all cards must be played there. I can just hobgoblin there and then other stuff. I think it's optimal to put Colossus there for now. I kind of don't want Cosmo in the destroyer lane is the only awkward thing. And then turn five. Maybe I do just Cosmo here, and then, like, I don't know what they're pulling here, but Cosmo here, and then I can, like, Iron Man or something. This doesn't really matter that much. Now, I mean, I'm just blocking all their honor real effects for later in the game, potentially. I can just Warpath also. But Warpath doesn't seem like that. I'll just, I'll just Iron Man to keep it honest, I guess. I am Iron Man. Maybe they think I play there now because of that. I mean, so I'm going to have nine left. I can just destroy her here. I feel like this is good. I'm going to have 30 middle. Ultron's fine. Boss is fine. So they Patriot... I mean, like, I didn't know what they were doing. I, I thought they were a Patriot deck, like, for sure. I thought Patriot was definitely a card. But when your turn is just, like, Invisible Woman, like, Misty Knight, Invisible Woman, like, hidden card, hidden card, hidden card, it's really hard to know. I, I just assumed it was, like, a Patriot deck or something. I didn't know what to think of that. So, honestly, a lot of cards in their hand could be pretty good. Okay, we get a brood. Interesting. Um, let's play to Daily Bugle, I think, for now. That's fine. Scorpion is annoying. Oh wow. So I think we wanna go wave and then Destroyer here, and then we want to Hobgoblin them the following turn, that feels pretty good. So let me wave. Professor X is tempting, but I think putting 14 power in the other lanes is how you beat Surfer here. Especially if we get a, a, like a Hobgoblin off or something, that seems really good. Zabu. I was not expecting Zabu. I'm gonna be honest. 
Uh, so I think we're snapping here because they it's pretty hard for them to play three cards here. I think we snap on the Hobgoblin. If their mine is nine here, that's just so good. They, we also saw a Brood. Oh, there's a Cerebro deck. That's what it is. It's a Cerebro deck. Like 100%, right? Oh no, I can't, I can't play my next card there. No! I mean, they're, they're stuck there. So I think it's pretty hard for us to lose now. Yeah. That's, so, what I talked about in my video. I snapped before I showed the Hobgoblin. I went wave, I went destroyer. I saw they couldn't follow up with anything crazy. I snapped before the Hobgoblin because it totally disrupts their Nexus. They stuck around for another cube. I'm plus one cube from what I would have been if I just like snap after I see what happens with the Hobgoblin. I thought, you know, they have Zabu, they can play two four drops here, they can play a three and a two, it was just very unlikely they would play three cards there, so you snap before the power play. Shuri's Lab is interesting. Um, so we can death lock, double death lock in the lab. This seems pretty worth it. I mean, so like Bucky Barnes getting doubled is kind of irrelevant, but then Devlock gets doubled and we can Hobgoblin that space potentially, or we can Professor X even maybe, if they don't go hard enough on it. Lizard is pretty annoying. Very good for them. I do really want the information from Daredevil, but I want a Cosmo too. I think I just Daredevil. The biggest issue I see is that I'm just setting myself. I think I maybe Daredevil here. I'm just like, I gotta set myself up to be able to win one of these other lanes is the biggest thing. And like, if I just destroy her here, I'm gonna lose. So if they don't play the big house, that's fine. Let's see what they do on this turn. Uh, Iron Man can change things a lot, potentially. Well, let's see what their role is here. So they just hard play middle and they professor exit. So I'm not gonna have the choice of fighting for it. So their warpath is gonna shrink if I if they play to right, where I can just like Professor X right or Professor X left myself and then like wave Cosmo or something. Obviously destroyer is really good here also. Don't do destroyer. Uh so what's the most power I can add? I'm flipping first, so I can go Cosmo, armor. And then they can only play three, four, three, one, two. And I'm adding a good amount of power here. Okay, they retreat. Yeah, that's a tough position. So we could have played to Iron Man in the middle. This is at 18. If they move their, if they play a card on their warpath, it would shrink, but that's not enough. Uh, we also could have Hobgoblin left, which is cuter, but Professor Xing is obviously better. Uh, but I think playing Daredevil to the right really paid out. I like Alex Warlock as a username. That's a good username. Um, okay. That's a Daredevil left. For the sake of like, if we draw Iron Man. So they're Mr. Negative deck, it seems like. Um. Kind of worried to wave now. Weirdly enough, I, I feel like wave might be pretty dangerous. 
Because if I wave and they miss your negative, they can play like four cards. No, maybe that's that's wrong actually. I probably sh I probably should wave. Because if I if I wave on their turn after Mr. Negative, it has a lot of power. So they are a Mr. Negative deck, they play Iron Man left. They have her own Iron Man, which is awesome. So I think we go Iron Man of our own on the left. Wave the last turn. And then if we wave the last turn, that means both players can only play two cards on the last turn of the game. Uh, it's just about where I play the wave, if that matters. Warpathing left probably means we win the Iron Man tile. What did they mistake? Oh, they see their Iron Man there. That's pretty scary. And they play an Adam Warlock, which doesn't do anything right now. That's hilarious. So let's see what they do here. I guess if they dump out their hand, we don't really want to destroy her anyways. Not a destroyer game where you don't draw your armor or your Cosmo or anything. It's, it's quite bad, actually, to to destroy, I would say, currently. So, I mean, they met, they never missed or negatived. So, they're full here by playing Rogue. Steal an ongoing ability from an enemy card at this location. Oh, that's brutal. Um... So, we're gonna double, then double. I can make it a 50-50 which one they steal. Which does not feel that bad. The bishop here. And I think playing wave into the bishop is pretty worthwhile. And then just seeing which ongoing they steal. Now it's a 50-50, so. Nice. We do draw the Cosmo. Our Warpath already got shrunk, so with Cosmo drawn, I think we just do this and we fight for every lane now. I mean, we're ahead right, we're ahead left. They could blue marble and we'd be sad, but I mean, that, like, you, we're just getting so specific if we're expecting a blue marble now. And they can only play, like, two cards, yeah. Uh, so normally I say like snap before you power play. Since I didn't know I had the destroyer, I don't think it was right to snap on the wave turn. Uh, if I knew I like destroyer would be my next card, I would have snapped. I mean that's really good for the Mr. Negative deck, which is scary. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna retreat on this since I know they're uh, Mr. Negative deck. Uh, ongoing enemy cards here have minus one power. Okay. I've never played against the Thanos deck uh, myself. I've seen it online, but I've never played against one. Okay. Let's go armor. Wave? They're snapping. Okay. I'm gonna stay in. I don't think I need to leave. Okay. Okay. So this is draw two stones from your deck, draw a card, next turn you get plus one energy, next turn you can move one card to this location, draw one card. Okay. So now, I mean, I get these stones, but they're, I can just get rid of them also. Where I can just go destroyer here. And then potentially like Iron Man there in the future or something. Uh, 
Or I can go Destroyer here. This is pretty hard for them to play for. I think Destroyer left is actually like a little bit better. Magneto. I'm gonna move, okay. So what are they doing here? I don't know what Thanos says. I don't know if Thanos says, um, like... Oh god, they fell. Okay. Power Stone, Scorpion, Blue Marble. Okay. So I think I Hobgoblin here. To fill this up. I think I'm stabbing back. I think I Hobgoblin here. And then I play, like, Warpath Iron Man. Yeah, okay. The fact that they gave us all of their, like, stones and we just got to destroy the whole lane worked out really good for us.